everybody hope you're all doing fantastically well it is Connor here from one leads we've got another video i hope you're all doing fantastically well make sure you're liking subscribing as always and commenting i read every single comment and i want to get onto that right now everybody we had the debrief last night hope you enjoyed it few opinions going here there and everywhere a few controversial ones at that and listen people have different opinions in football i go down to the pub with my mates all leads fans and we'll chat i'll disagree with so and so he'll disagree with me blah 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 that's how things work in football Ball, as you guys know because you'll go down with your mates and unless you've got four or five mates who are on the same page as you you will disagree about a lot of things um, like I do with my friends so listen that's what the debrief's all about I don't normally agree with with everything everyone says and they don't agree with me as well so listen it is what it is I enjoy it I enjoy the debate I enjoy discussion with fellow Leeds fans who want to talk about Leeds listen I want to address something that you guys have been putting in the comment section below about people being back on the show the debrief is an open platform. It's an open platform for whoever to come on, really, in the in the YouTube space, whatever. Um, I try get people who want to come on and people who have really good relationships with each other and can galvanize, cultivate opinions. I feel like we've got that right now on the debrief. I feel like there's some really intelligent discussion. I really enjoy it. Previous people who've been on have been amazing. Have been an absolute credit to the show. Guys, I can't do anything. I am an individual who is a Leeds United fan. I don't pay people to come on the show. I can't get people back on the show. If they want to come back on, they're more than welcome to come back on. Of course they are. We can extend the show. I can do all of these things. I can't make them come back on. I can't do that. I'm just an individual sat here talking about Leeds you know, with friends, that's all. You know, it's not a serious matter. There's so much, so many people in the in the Leeds sphere, weirdly, who want to create some sort of drama. It's very, very odd. There's no drama. There never has been drama at all between me and any of these people. They just have busy lives. That's it. And I can't do anything about that. So let's move on. It's the last time I'm going to address it. If you want certain people on, certain people have Twitter accounts, YouTube accounts, brilliant be no falling out whatsoever and there never will be from my side of things and from their side of things never ever will be great people but guys listen i can't do anything about it and that's that's every panel show will experience the same thing certain people have got busy lifestyles you have to adjust around that it is what it is let's move on right leeds united content archie gray i want to start on archie what do Leeds do with this individual? Apparently, Man City scouts were there. Scum scouts were there. Arsenal scouts were there watching him against Bristol City. And wow, what did we see? We saw Archie Gray put in the right-back performance of the season. Right-back performance of the season. That's when Byram's been there. Shackleton's been there. Um, obviously, saw Jed Spence for a little bit of a cameo. But he was exceptional, absolutely exceptional. It made me laugh how Bristol City afterwards were saying, oh, well, we should have gone down, you're the, the assistant manager, we should have gone down that side more. You were going down that side a lot in that first half, so you targeted that side. Whatever, even if you didn't think Archie Gray was there, you thought Leeds United were weak down that side, which is interesting in itself. But Bell was up against Gray. Gray, Gray was superb. He was absolutely superb, and they were putting a lot of pressure on him in that, in that space, and I thought Archie Gray really adapted to that. Now... Central midfielders going to right back is not like an unusual thing. We've got examples of that within the squad. You know, Jamie Shackle Shackleton being the obvious one, but it's actually a lot easier. And I'll be honest with you, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, going right back. I understand you're up against some tricky wingers, but as a central midfielder, you are the engine room. You are the brain of the machine. And Archie Gray, I think, has, has almost gone right back and his performances have elevated even higher because he's got, he's got more time on the ball. He's got more space. He's got the ability to work with that right winger in close proximity. He's got the whole pitch in front of him instead of half the pitch normally. He doesn't always have to have a closed body shape and, and be pressurised when he's moving open body shape because in that central midfield space, it's so compact. And against so many midfielders, it's been high press, uh, high press from that other side. So Archie has got a lot more time in that space. He can, We can really see his passing ability, his range of passing, his distribution. And I think in that right back spot, I'd, I'd be looking to play him there. I would. Now, the, the difficulty is going to be when Jed comes back. So when Jed comes back, Spence goes back in. He's a Premier League right back. Um, he's unbelievable. So that's when we 
rotate Archie a little bit more in those central midfield spaces. But if you're asking me who goes right back between Archie Gray, Shackleton and Byram, it's Archie Gray every day of the week. He was so good in that space. And there's a lot of contract talk at the minute with regards to Archie Gray. And I think it'd be fantastic to get him signed because honestly, guys, in my opinion, there are going to be sharks swimming around this guy in January. I think it's going to come around that quickly. 17 years of age and putting in performances like that against Bristol City, it's unheard of. He was so, so good. And um, reminds me a little bit of, of James Milner as well in terms of that 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 passing distribution when he was young, that work ethic, reading the game so well at a young age. And yeah, a lot of comparatives there, but Archie's a, a bigger lad. Um, you know, uh, height-wise, he's, he's, he's developed beyond his years as well. And, and Harry's coming through the, the development squad as well, which is which is great to see. But Leeds have got a real product line when it comes to the greys. And yeah, hopefully Eddie... Um, will be in his ear when it comes to when it comes to staying at Leeds. You know, I thought that was amazing when it came to Jude Bellingham and not ruining his career straight away by going to one of the quote unquote big clubs. Man United were in for him. He went to Dortmund. I hope that Eddie gets in his ear. I says, look, your development at Leeds United, you'll play more games, you'll become a better player, and there's always going to be clubs there interested in you. You're 17 years of age. I'm not saying he's going to be tapped up, but when you've got scouts looking at you already in October and they are top club scouts then it's going to be difficult it's going to be difficult but hopefully Leeds can at least keep him for a season or two that'd be very very nice contract apparently is in the works for actually great fantastic to hear Angus Kinnear has come out and said that allegedly well well he's come out and said um quote unquote I should say that Leeds United uh, have the funds available for January, but he then closed the comment with, that's why they've left two loan spots open so Leeds can delve into the loan market. Now, this is great news for me, and it's great that Leeds, when Angus Kinnear has been asked about it, it's great that he's still thinking to himself and, and Leeds are planning on doing something in January because so many things can happen. There can be injuries, as we've seen with, with Willie and Jed. There can be problems within the side when it comes to whatever it may be, certain individuals being left out. Things do need to happen in January. You need to uh, evolve. You need to keep up with the competition. And at this moment in time, I still don't feel Leeds United have found that consistency. We've still not found that composure in front of goal, that ruthlessness. Maybe a couple of additions here and there are going to improve that. But when you're looking at the left-back position, I still feel... Leeds are really, really light there. Really, really light there. I, you know, when we're talking about a winger, I mean, right now you'd literally love a winger who could, you know, be a little bit more composed in those areas. But Leeds are fine in that department. The interesting one is going to be in that central attacking midfield space because Leeds, obviously, as we know with Amiri, were interested in the central attacking midfielder and would have got one if Amiri had have agreed terms and liked Leeds. <laughs> so. We've seen at the minute that it's a bit of a different system. So we're getting a lot of fluidity. And when it comes to Jorginho Rutter, him and Perot are almost switching when it comes to that that 10 role. I still think it has been difficult in phases for Leeds to break down. So that's that next signing will be very interesting if we are to go for a 10. But a left back for me is needed. I don't think we can just be relying on Sam Byram all the time. I think Sam has been excellent. But I do feel there's going to be a bout of injury at some point. Now, whether or not Shackleton can be his almost rotation option when Jed's back and then Jed's got the rotation option of, of Archie Gray and, and Shackleton, obviously, and Byram who can play. You, you've got a bit of versatility there versatility there in, in who can replace who if one is unfit. I don't want to be seeing Luke Aylin anymore or Liam Cooper anymore. So maybe you're looking at a centre-back option again. Obviously, Leeds were looking at centre-backs in 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 the summer months as well as Joe Roden, but you know, is there a Reese Oxford out there that maybe Leeds can look at? I know his injury record isn't great, but he's a top player at this level. You've got to think of worst case scenario. If Ampadu is out, what do Leeds do? Does Gruev come in? He's a defensive midfielder, a little bit of a playmaker, deep line playmaker, that would probably work. But if Joe Roden is out, you're looking at a scenario which we saw at Southampton. If we're coming up against good teams, which we will be coming up against in the future, you can't be relying, for me, on Liam Cooper for a large period of games. You can when the times are good and it's a, de it's a decent, easy game at home, i.e. Watford. But when you're looking at a Southampton and a good team in this division, Liam Cooper is just going to be you know, found out, really. He's too proactive and slow, um, proactive in a bad way. So 
do you then look at a centre back? I think that would be a shrewd option, someone who can learn and and and, and you know someone who can challenge for for, for that spot really. But yeah, um, talking about centre backs, Max Verber. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about Max Verber. Much and Gladback sporting director said that a warrior. That's why we signed him. Max is a guy who radiates something. He's a leader and and. Um, it's exactly what they need. Uh, uh, he is a leader, a leader. So yeah, um, yeah. We listen. We know Verba um, sort of radiated that. I thought he was a bit of a false leader, to be honest with you. But listen, he's got quality. We know he's got quality. He's playing at the Bundesliga level now, and and yeah, someone like him would have been a, a nice addition. Uh, but then, in my opinion, we wouldn't have then and got Joe Rodon, who I think is is better than Max Verba. So um, yeah. Definitely centre back, something to look at. Left back for me and a central attacking midfielder. Guys, let me know exactly what you think. Where should Leeds be looking at in terms of replacement? I'm fascinated to hear what you guys think. Really appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you in a bit.